Captain This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. So by the time you're watching this, maybe the Avengers 4 trailer will be out, and possibly the Spider-Man Far From Home one will be too. And I'm sure I'll get around to talking about them eventually, but for now, I have a much more urgent issue on my mind. I'm of course referring to the 2006 X-Men epic The Last Stand, or X3 as I think some people call it. Okay, fine. Discussion about this barely remembered superhero movie from 2006 probably isn't the most pressing thing on your mind, but maybe it should be, and I'll tell you why. For a long time, I thought this movie wasn't really that bad. I even remember seeing it in theaters with my dad when I was like 13 and thinking it was pretty great. It had Wolverine doing cool Wolverine stuff, the Dark Phoenix story, and a pretty awesome third act battle. In the years since, I've of course heard that it had a reputation for being, you know, not great, but whatever, I remember thinking it was pretty good. But then, on Saturday, I did what any well-adjusted person getting home at like 2am would do. I scrolled through my PS4 and decided to sign up for like a free trial of stars so that I could watch this old X-Men movie. And what I found was... I mean, it was X-Men The Last Stand, it wasn't great, but I think this movie's failures might be just as interesting as X2's successes. A year after The Last Stand, a little movie called Spider-Man 3 would open, and a year after that would bring both The Dark Knight and Iron Man. So in a weird way, I think of Stand as the beginning of the end for this era of comic book movies. Sure, they've made plenty of X-Men movies since, but they've never really dominated the movie landscape like they did with this first trilogy. After this, Fox was kinda playing catch up. And now, well they're about to be playing for the other team. So in this video, I want to dive into this movie, its weird production, and what makes it so annoyingly mediocre. It's Wolverine's missile firing X cycle. Yeah! Claw slashing Wolverine cuts evil down to size. X-Men The Last Stand is a classic example of a studio movie that tries to please absolutely everyone and fails to do anything particularly well in the process. But before I talk about that, we have to discuss the elephant in the room, Brett Ratner. And look, I don't think the first two X-Men movies are perfect by any means. The first one especially I think hasn't aged super well. And as a fan of the comics, they annoy me in a lot of places, mostly in how they sacrifice almost the entire team's personalities at the altar of Wolverine. But there's a level of care and craftsmanship with those movies, as well as some surprisingly great performances that elevate them above your standard action film. But Brian Singer didn't particularly care about the X-Men, so when he got a shot at directing a superhero he actually liked, he took it, leaving the conclusion of his presumed trilogy kind of high and dry. Enter Ratner, the director of the Rush Hour movies, Red Dragon, and Money Talks. He was a solid enough studio guy, presumably able to bring in movies on time and on budget. He was also a terrible, terrible choice from a creative perspective. I like the Rush Hour movies just as much as anyone else who was a kid when they came out, but when looking at his filmography as a whole, one thing becomes very clear. He makes movies that tend to fill the 3pm time slot on TNT nicely, but aren't exactly ambitious. Which is a problem, because The Last Stand is such a sprawling movie that has to tie up so many character arcs that it really needed someone with a vision, someone who wouldn't cut corners. But to be fair, it's not all Ratner's fault. The movie's screenwriters, Simon Kinberg and Zach Penn, both have a lot of experience with superhero stories, and they were pushing to adapt the famous Dark Phoenix saga. But Fox wasn't so sure. They saw the story as too weird, too dark, and honestly, just a little too geeky. They were much more sold on this Mutant Cure storyline, which they felt gave Magneto a great motivation and was more in line with the tone of the first two films. So a weird compromise was struck. The Dark Phoenix story would remain, albeit in a stripped down, streamlined form that robbed the story of its most iconic moments and honestly much of its emotional weight, and the Cure storyline would be included too, giving plenty of opportunities for new mutants to make appearances. The biggest problem with the Dark Phoenix changes, for me at least, isn't the lack of an actual phoenix, it's that it kind of becomes no longer Gene's storyline. Since, as with so much in this franchise, it's completely subsumed by Wolverine. This is at the expense of pretty much everyone else. Scott Summers is killed fairly early on, Storm has almost nothing to do. So much of the actual team feels like a footnote, while Jean is almost entirely defined by her relationship to Logan. And Jean and Scott are far from the only mutants to really get the short end of the stick in this movie. 
The Last Stand places a very heavy emphasis on fan service and trying to just stuff in as many recognizable faces on screen as possible. Sometimes even going so far as to give them dated memes as dialogue. I'm the juggernaut, bitch! Which has not aged well. The real problem with this though is that it makes the movie feel as wide as a lake, but kind of as shallow as a kiddie pool. None of these characters, from the Juggernaut to Ellen Page's Kitty Pride, get much in the way of depth or anything to do, and the whole thing feels like a missed opportunity as a result. Oh, they also kill off Professor X in a scene that's not quite as emotional as it should be, but hey, at least Ian McKellen is having a really great time as Magneto. He seems to know that he's in like a worse movie than the first two, and he seems fine really getting goofy with it. And I will give Fox one thing, the whole Cure storyline is a pretty good motivation for him. Overall, I'd say that he's probably my favorite part of the movie. Partially though, because so many of the other actors just seem totally checked out by this point. I mean, James Marsden jumped ship with Brian Singer to play Perry White's nephew in Superman Returns. Not even Perry White, his nephew! Which I think is the perfect illustration of how thankless of a role Cyclops is in these X-Men movies. Been a long time, little man. Not nearly long enough. In the end though, I'll say this for The Last Stand. It's perfectly watchable. It goes by fairly fast, is paced well, and has a good action set piece or two. There's just nothing here that's all that exciting. And from the time they hired Brett Ratner, I think that was just always going to be the result. Because The Last Stand is his kind of movie. Not great, maybe not even good, but not bad enough to be especially notable either. Ratner isn't Uva Bull in 2006, churning out like the worst of the worst. He's just the unambitious director that got tasked with making a movie that needed to be ambitious. So it really shouldn't come as a shock that he delivered what he usually does. A competent enough film, devoid of almost anything memorable or worth caring about. But I guess I'll wrap up this video about a movie I wouldn't recommend with mentioning a show I definitely would. Even though it's currently finals week for me and I've been kind of buried in work, I couldn't help but finish all six episodes of the documentary series Egypt, which covers Egyptian history in a really interesting, entertaining way. I watched it thanks to my sponsor this week, Curiosity Stream, which has over 2,000 documentaries to watch right now. Not just about history either, tech, science, nature, they've got you pretty much covered on all fronts and it was actually founded by the same guy who started the Discovery Channel. The price is pretty great too, just $2.99 a month. But if you're still not sure, you can check it out for 30 days for free by going to curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight. So check out that link in the description or pinned comment below and watch a great documentary on almost any device. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.